Hey everybody, happy leap year. It is Saturday, uh, the 29th of 2020, and it is leap year, so yeah, it's February 29th. I am going to, um, I just got back from working at the store today, and shout out to Topaz, who said she's watching these videos. I told her, it's kind of funny when you talk to someone that actually you know, and they watch the videos, and you're just like, ah, oh, I'm goofing around, just ignore my silliness, because you never know who's watching. All right, um, normally I would put this on something that rolls, but instead I put myself on something that rolls, actually, what I could do. I have the wheels, you know, that you put things on. Did I do it? No. So here I am, already sitting down, to see if this is gonna fit. It might fit on here this way. Maybe not. Just shy of being able to fit right on there. Let's see. It means it's just hanging off the edges a little bit. Anyways, okay, there you go. Something I could have done before I started filming. Yay! By the way, over here is a jar that I found. I love old jars, and I have a bunch of vintage jewelry in it. Some of the earrings that are, you know, pairs. Some missing one or another. Make a junk jar. People love junk jars full of vintage jewelry that they can recreate into other things, but that's what I was working on a little bit earlier. I am using a white color called Vanilla Frosting, and this is clay-based paint, and it is a little bit runnier than what we get with Dixie Belle. I'm stirring it up a little bit with my paintbrush. Dixie Belle is a lot thicker than country chick paint, but this was open and this is a very shiny surface. This person, this is a vintage or an antique piece, but it has that, uh, the dreaded glossy finish on it from the stain. And you can see the paint isn't even really adhering to it. It's very watery. So I'm going to dig a little deeper, mix it in the jar. I should have done this before, mixed it up really good because what's happened is the top has got the top part that's really, really wet and nothing like knocking it over onto the floor. Okay, so I am going to get a rag to soak that up. Yeah, because it's that shiny, shiny, shiny thing, it's not doing very well. All right, I'm switching gears. You see, I don't know if you can see. No, you can't see that on the floor, I just dumped about an eighth of this jar on the floor. Haven't done that in a long time. It's one of those days, right? Actually, all right, here's how lazy I am. I'm just going to scoot over, get this colorful end piece, which is a rag, scoop this up off the floor as much as possible. Again, I have a rug down that is made for, it's like a continual drop cloth, so I don't have to put down the drop cloth each time, but I haven't dumped that much paint in a long time. Forgotten those days of dropping paint. All right, I am going to switch gears and grab a different color. It's a little bit thicker and wipe this off my hands. Again, this is a water base, so I'm just using a rag, but you see all that? That's all the paint I just dumped on the floor. <laughs> oh, gotta love those days. All right, let me get up and uh, get this fixed up. Back from cleaning up, and this time I'm gonna try the Dixie Belle buttercream which is white but just a tad bit towards the yellow tint um if you saw it in person you would just say it's white you wouldn't even know that it's not perfectly white no wait i want to roll this around a bit this is 32 ounces i like getting the bigger jars because i use it so much that i can um you know I'll use this on many, many projects. All right, there we go. A little bit thicker. 
because it's Dixie Belle. Now, I did already put this paint on here. Can you see the difference? It's hard to tell because it's still runny. Can you still, it's that first coat. This is one coat of the other color. This is one coat of buttercream. So much thicker, even on a glossy surface. Because this paint is made thicker, you can see it is adhering even without me using slick stick, which I should have used. If you're doing this, use slick stick on this because it is very slick because of that gloss they have on this. And that means paint can, you know, if you bump into it, just rub off if it's not cured for a long time. But I am going to be doing a distressing part. So you'll see that I kind of want it not to be perfectly adhered. I want it to be able to come off easily. Again, can you see the difference? One coat, one coat. This is Dixie Belle Buttercream. That was a good example of the difference of what paint you use on different projects. It's a huge difference. Time saver. Now the first coat is just to get it on there. And then we'll come back later and do the next coat and the techniques that I'll be adding. If you watch our haul video, H-U-L video from this morning, you'll see that we found this piece at an estate sale this morning. And I just fell in love with this piece. All right, let's scoot it back just a little bit. I hope it doesn't fall. There. So it's partially on. You guys can't see, but on this side, it's barely hanging on to this furniture dolly. So I'm going to slowly move it over. Hoping it doesn't fall off. You see now how, do you see how that one, the difference in that paint? That thickness, that one coat. It's amazing. All right, leaving the drawers in. Again, this is that shiny, glossy, probably like a poly, polyurethane. The kind that after a couple of years turns really yellow. Um, the reason you can't see that is because they used really, really, really dark chocolate brown paint and so the yellow is kind of hidden because the brown is not showing it if it had been this color this buttercream originally with that poly uh urethane you would have been able to see the yellow tint you'll see that in a lot of older stuff when it looks yellowish it's because the polyurethane is changing colors aging making it yellow Again, I'm just going to get this base coat of buttercream on here and then because it's been such a long day I may just take a break let it dry overnight or I can just let it dry 20 minutes to an hour or so and do the next step depending on what we're doing tonight it is a uh, did I say Friday earlier it's Saturday I hope I said Saturday and tomorrow is Sunday it is March 1st, 2020, and do you know what that means? Do you know what that means for us? Tomorrow is 20 years in business to the day. We have been open 20 years at the Other Side Vintage tomorrow, March 1st, 2020, because we opened on March 1st, 2000. <laughs> Unbelievable. Cameron was just being born. Brandy was a kid. These are my nieces and nephews. Brooklyn, I believe, was in elementary school still. 
maybe she was in middle school. So yeah, now she's married. So yeah, I feel old. It goes by so quick. You still feel like you're in your thirties, even though I'm officially 50 as of a couple months ago. It really does go by fast. All right, and I'm using the uh, Dixie Belle Mini Brush. It's called the Mini. There's also the Mini Angled. I use that too, but I tend to use, if you're going to need one brush to use on a ton of projects, like hundreds, because I've used this brush so many times, get the Dixie Belle Mini. And yes, we do sell it. Just shout out below and tell me your address. I will get it to you. You can also check out our website. All right, can you see that? It's going by pretty quick. So I think before I spilled, I was saying that Topaz, she's one of our consigners at the other side, at our brick and mortar in Tallahassee, Florida, and downtown. And uh, she also makes some amazing pieces. Uh, she took a t-shirt and sewed it, a vintage one, sewed it onto a flannel shirt on the back. It's been a while. Was it my size? Otherwise, I would have bought it. I can't remember if it was Marley or, I can't remember, Hendrix. I can't remember who it was at the time, but I just remember it was amazing. And I come to find out she had made that. Okay, can you see? See the difference? Look at that. Look how dark and look how, and this is just one coat. That is just one coat on a shiny surface without any primer. I didn't even clean off this piece except for get the dust off and basic wipe down. I didn't use heavy solvents or heavy cleaner to clean it. you're ever scared, just start painting. How many of you have painted your own piece of furniture for your own home? Comment below. Tell me what you painted and what color you painted it. I'm curious, how many painters do we have out there? DIYers. There we go. This is vintage antique, it has those insets. So I'm just making sure I go ahead and get my first coat, including the inset. Almost done here. One of the beast has awoken. We have rescues, cats and dogs. They hear me talking and they're like, who is she talking to? You have to go check this out. Ha, it's Mikey. I should have known. Hi, Mikey. Here, real quick. <sighs> this is Mikey. This is not my kitty, Mikey. Meaning he wasn't my kitty. He just showed up and started hanging out and I called him not my kitty. And then Brooklyn called him Mikey. Now, he has his shots. We got him fixed. Thank you for uh, helping us out, Karen Lowen and everybody else. Uh, Stephanie Perkins from the different programs here in Tallahassee to get your cat spayed and neutered. And, yeah, we did that thinking we'd find Mikey a good home, and uh, he kind of just won us over. So, not my kitty, Mikey. I guess maybe our kitty now. Ah, there's Jason. He just got home. He works all day and he's just getting in, so. I was just getting a base coat on this, showing everybody the difference between a different paint that I used first that I actually spilled. I haven't spilled in a long time. Oh, really? Yeah, I did a good job. I spilled it. It got this rag to pick it all up, but <laughs> luckily we have this this rug for those purposes, but it's yep. one of the worst spills I've done in a long time. I like the piece, it looks good. Yeah? Yeah. 
What a day. We were slammed today. It's the last yeah. day of the month. Happy leap year. And tomorrow is our 20th anniversary for the store. Yeah. Yay. We're Hi, so Jesus. excited. Oh, I should have a monkey. Uh, Mikey just woke up and came downstairs, so when I heard him, I told everybody about how he's not our kitty, Mikey. <laughs> not my kitty, Mikey, and how Brooklyn named him, but... Yeah, I just realized I am painting, and I got to the back of it, so as I'm talking to Jason, I'm not showing you guys what I'm painting. <laughs> and so you can't see the fact that, like, yeah, almost done. And Topaz came by the store today, and I was telling them how she did mention to me that she's watching the videos and commented, and she was very sweet about it. And then, like, you never know who's watching. It's kind of funny. We were slammed today, you guys. The park was hopping. Redwood Square. That's where we're located in Tallahassee, Florida. It's the art park we're in. And uh, there were people everywhere. It was a beautiful day. It was cold and chilly but sunny so it was perfectly for florida that means non-buggy <laughs> fresh air lots of fun okay almost done getting that first coat on i thought at least this way like i said I was telling him when he got home, I didn't know what we were going to do, but like this way we can relax if we want to. I don't have to touch it again. Get this base coat on it. It'll be dry or I can work on it in the next 20 to, you know, minutes or an hour. All right, I'm going to do the top. I know you can see the top from there, so I'm going to keep on painting. Notice I'm using the same paintbrush and I have not used the Mr. Bottle that I usually use because this is the first coat, it's antique, and it's taking to this paint really well. I could now mist it a little bit, makes the paint move a little bit smoother, but it's really working well on this, so I don't need to. Oh yeah, we had um, a client come in today looking for a uh, Dixie Bell a paint, the, not a paint, Dixie Bell paint in the color evergreen and we had just um, ordered some more paint and it'll be here next week but I actually had some of the evergreen here at our home base because I sell stuff on eBay and Etsy and I ship from home or I store the item you know store everything here off-site from the store and then ship it when we sell it online so I can get it out within the same day but the customer was there and so Brooklyn said, hey, can you bring this? And I was like, yes, I actually do have that here. So I drove over to the store to deliver some evergreen paint to a customer. I unfortunately did not get her name. Very kind. She was buying evergreen in another color. And uh, she was shopping. It only took me a few minutes to get over there. And then I ended up staying because it was so busy. And I got to see Kayla, and I got to see Bill Davis, and I got to see, of course, Topaz, as I mentioned her earlier. And I got to see uh, Andy, another one of our consigners, and I got to see Lita, a good friend, a good friend's daughter, but now a good friend to us, too. She's adorable. So, it was a good day. I got to get out and visit, even though it was panicky and really didn't want to see anybody today with my anxiety, but sometimes it doesn't work out like that, and it turned out okay. All right. Babe. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. I almost said thanks, Poppy, because that's what I call it, <laughs> because we've talked about this in another video. Anyways, Cuban culture. All right. There is the first coat, and if you started watching early from the beginning, if you haven't, go back to the beginning and watch the first few minutes where I spill paint and we're using a different paint, and then I switch back over to Dixie Bell and how different how different the coverage is and you can see the difference immediately okay it is porch time before it gets too dark it's gonna be dark probably in the next 20 minutes but we're gonna go outside and chill out for a minute 
I'm going to rinse this out of my brush just down the sink because it's all safe, non-toxic. There are no smells, so it's not making the house smell bad. There are no fumes whatsoever, so you can paint inside, which is so great about this paint. Again, this is the Buttercream by Dixie Belle. And we do sell it online and in the store. All right, there's the first coat. March 1st, everyone, 2020. It is officially, officially our 20th anniversary of being in business. Today, March 1st, 2000, we opened up our store for the first time to the public. We opened up February 1st just to get our stuff together to ourselves, getting it ready. But on March 1st, we opened the doors, 2000, and it is now March 1st, 2020. 20 years, and let me tell you, it goes by quick so do what you got to do say you love those that you love and um, get over the small stuff because it goes by so quick you don't have time to worry about the little 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 stuff all right enough of that so I let this dry overnight I decided to take the rest of the night off last night after a long day and I am going to now put on the second coat move this over just a little bit okay second coat there. So you can see how it dried. And remember, I used a different paint first when they came back with the Dixie Belle buttercream for the thickness. And so I have misted my brush. You saw me use my mister. We do sell these misters. And I'm going to just mist the piece just a little bit. I don't want to be totally wet, but I don't want it to just suck in the paint because it's a little dry. P.S. It's really cold outside in sunny Tallahassee, Florida on this March 1st. And uh, so I am just gonna wear my hoodie even in the house. Just putting a real nice smooth coat on there for the second coat. I'm planning on distressing this piece or adding a transfer or some kind of mold. I think I may just distress it. I feel like this antique piece speaks for itself just in its um, originality. The pools, the, uh, the way the wood and the nails show through from when it was built. I think uh, these things help make a piece unique and you don't need to add all that extra must and fuss when it's already a unique piece. Okay, so here are the legs. I have this on a rolling dolly. You can get these online and actually they ship them for free on some websites. I will try to put the link below. You can also pick them up at Harbor Freight if you have one locally or Lowe's or Home Depot. Only thing about Lowe's and Home Depot, honestly, is there a lot more money for the same item there than it would be at Harbor Freight or online with free shipping. All right. Now, that's a second coat with being uh, using white White usually takes more coat or light colored items usually take more coats, especially when you're going over dark like we are on this piece. Um, but you'll see this is a nice clean coating. All right, I'm gonna turn it around. We are on the back now. It's moving because I don't have it stabilized on this. There. I usually just go ahead and put them on those little rolling feet, but the dolly was here and I just grabbed it last night so I could go ahead and start painting. I always say that this, the whole part of a project is to go ahead and just start and get done. Sometimes you put off like, oh, I need to go grab that or oh, I need to do, like, just go ahead and get that first coat on. There's always reasons for it not to 
get done if you wait and wait and wait. And with this type of paint, again, no smells, so I can paint inside the house on this chilly day. And no smells. Easy to wash the paintbrush in the kitchen sink. It's not going to hurt anything for the pipes or anything like that. Go ahead and just get started. Don't wait for the perfect day. Every day is the perfect day to get started. So that's the next thing you'll do is wake up and 20 years have gone by in business. How is that even possible? My niece and nephew are all grown up and they were literally in diapers <laughs> helping out at the store. It was so funny. It's Cameron and Brandy, we used to have this thing when a customer would come in, they could see them out the um, glass windows of the store. We were located on Tharp Street originally. And the thing we would say is, incoming! Incoming, Aunt Zan! Aunt Zan! Incoming! Which would tell me that a customer was walking in the door and they would, they would let me know that. Incoming, Aunt Zan! Aunt Zan! Incoming! Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Brandy. <laughs> and let me tell you, what I wouldn't give to have those two at the store now saying that exact thing. Incoming! Now they're both off doing their most creative things. Both very creative kids. Pretty much they are entrepreneurs and self-employed, which is impressive, which gives me a little bit of joy and uh, know how to do their own thing and creative and help others and turned out to be great kids. I was a little hellion when I was young. I hung out with the wrong people for a little while and always did crazy things because you only live once, right? I'm kind of glad I did in a way. But anyways, these kids were good. I was the bad kid. Now, not so much, I'm older. I got it all out of my system before I could be, uh, you know, arrested for it. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I did get in a little trouble when I was younger. We won't get into that, but my mom could tell you all about that. How awful I was for a while. And still am. I'm grumpy. <laughs> Again, I'm glad I got all my Hillian stuff done. I'm kind of glad I experienced stuff, too. Get it over with. See what you like and what you don't like. That's part of life. I'm not saying going out and break the law. But what I am saying is try out different things until you find what you love. I was watching a George Carlin biography on YouTube. It's actually an interview of him being asked questions about his life. And I was amazed to find out how he was told to do things one thing and to be successful he had to do things a certain way and of course he wanted to be successful but then he started realizing it didn't feel right he's kind of being fake like he wanted to say the things he wanted to say of course if you know George Carlin what he wanted to say was the F word <laughs> he wanted to say things about politics that he thought were crazy without being you know kicked off the airwaves and eventually he just decided to be himself. And before that, he had done so many things on radio and TV and specials nationally, but never really got much recognition because he was what? Just like everybody else. He was the mainstream. He was um, trying to reproduce what had already been re recreated, uh, had been created, like Danny Kay and some of others of his favorites. And what he decided to do was, hey, how about I just be George Carlin? Georgie boy is what he was when he was younger. Why not just be Georgie and do what Georgie likes? And that way, he was doing what he loved and he was getting paid for it. So he took that chance and he may have lost some commercial TV spots because you can't say the F word and you can't talk about politics without getting some flack from you know, commercialism. But what he did do is he became a legend in his own. Who else is George Carlin? There's only one George Carlin. And I was lucky enough to go see him perform live at FSU. 
the same year that he had passed away. And let me tell you, I love that man. He was not only a comedian, he was a philosopher, and he made you think. Whether you agreed with him or not, he made you think. And so, what I'm saying is, be yourself. If you don't want to paint furniture all white, paint it zebra, crazy polka dots, whatever, you do that. You find what fits for you, what you like, and do what you like. And that's what life's about. Figure it out. Don't worry about what your belt thinks. Do your own thing. So, now we all know who George Carlin is. Alright, my phone is blowing up, which tells me, Jason, good news. Okay, so they're sending messages back and forth on the, uh, the store's chat between the crew. And it's telling my phone to have messages. But I can't read it, but all I can see that it said was good news. So I'm not going to stop filming to check that. Sometimes I have to stop filming to answer questions for customers that are asking questions about online things or Instagram. Or It looks like Jason and Charlie and Kayla have it covered. So I don't have to stop. Thank you for a great crew so I don't have to stop doing what I love doing painting. All right. I know I'm jumping, but you guys go check out George Carlin online, YouTube. For those who don't know who George Carlin is, gosh, I am old. He was a little before my time, but let me tell you, though, that man is hilariously amazing to make you think. One of my favorite skits, and I'll get the name wrong, but it was kind of like how kids nowadays all get an award for just participating. There's no winner or loser. Just participating means you're a winner. And let's just say he says the boy's name is Johnny. Johnny, congratulations, you participated. You're wonderful. Johnny, yeah, da, da, da. Johnny, you didn't show up, that's fine. You thought about participating. You're a winner, you're a winner, you're a winner. And then Johnny goes and gets out in the real world and gets a real job and he doesn't show up on time or he doesn't show up at all. Or he's not doing his work at all, thinking, you know what? I'm a winner. I don't have to do anything. I just have to show up. And I'm a winner. We're all winners. And he says, and I can't use his words. I'm paraphrasing. Johnny, this is coming from the employer. You're not a winner. We're not all winners. You're a loser. Get your bags. Get your stuff and get out of here. You're fired. And I still, I may have even said that on another video. It makes me crack up because there are people that are out there are like that. They just assume like, hey, just because I'm here, you should appreciate me. No, it's not how it works. And so when I have people like Kayla Pickron and other people that have helped us out over the years who are so genuinely, sincerely just nice and want to help in any way they can and go over and beyond, appreciate those people because before that was a standard and you might get a few bad apples. Now, that's the rarity, is the nice ones. Everybody else just is out for themselves and don't care and don't look beyond their nose to say, oh, I should help clean that up. Or maybe I should go tell Miss Smith that the thing is going on sale next week to come back. Or maybe I should pick up that piece of paper on the floor, even though I didn't put it down there. Maybe I should pick it up so the store looks better. So thank you to the Kaylas of the world. Thank goodness. All right, I don't know if you can see the top, because the top, is a thicker wood. I'm assuming they had a veneer over this at some point, and that veneer was taken off before I got to it. This wood is taking the paint quicker. I don't even have to wet it down. So I'm just gonna go over it crosshatch style, which just means I'm going back and forth one way and then the other way just to get it in all the grooves, because real wood has grooves. Nicks and crannies, what do you call that? Nicks and crannies, not nicks and crannies. I always say that. There we have it. The second coat. I'm going to let this dry for a while while I go do some paperwork because it is the end of the month. It's actually the beginning of the month because that means the end of the month of yesterday. It's time to get the consigners reports out and get checks ready for the consigners. Pay the taxes, pay the rent, pay the phone and Wi-Fi and all those other bills. They're all waiting. Every month it goes by quicker and quicker. So. 
there you have it. You can see second coat looking good. May not need another coat. I'll know when it dries if I decide if I'm going to put a third coat. And I might just because it's white. And like I said, white needs more coats. I almost fell over. Ah! <laughs> I'm on my tippy toes. All right. Well, thank you for watching and we'll have an update soon. What a day. We are just now closing up at the store at the other side vintage at the brick and mortar and the roll up door broke. Um, we rent our space and the roll up doors are from, uh, a, we're in a vintage warehouse and they break sometimes. And of course it broke on a Sunday afternoon. So we can't close the door, which means we can't leave the store. So Jason's there trying to fix it and it's Sunday and tomorrow the office isn't open. And there's no like after hours number. We've tried all that. We've called and left messages and emails. So it's like, ah, uh, I don't know if he's going to spend the night at the store tonight to make sure <laughs> nothing's stolen because we can't close this roll up door or I hope he's going to be able to fix it. He's had, he's been able to fix it every time before, but this is getting old quick. And, uh, at the end of the week, Sunday is the end of our week because we have Monday off. The last thing you want to do at the end of the day is to deal with a door. You just want to go home, you, you know, especially because it's our 20th anniversary today. And it's been a long, crazy weekend and dealing with some things from the square that I, I don't even want to go into yet. But, like, it has been, instead of enjoying the 20-year reunion, reunion, anniversary, we're stressing and unable to enjoy it. And now we get a broken door. So... That belly aching, I still love what we do. <laughs> I decided to put on a third coat of this um, buttercream on this particular piece. And that's again, when you're dealing with whites or light colors, you may have to put on extra coats. That's usually a given, especially when going over such, from such a dark wood to a lighter paint color. Um, like I mentioned before, that happens sometimes, and I would rather have more on than less. I could have gotten away with just the two, but I want to make sure the customer's happy and that it's really, really well done. If it was just in my house or for me, I wouldn't even be doing this next coat because, you know, it would be su sufficient the way it was, but I want it to be really, really good for the clients. Um, oh yeah, my dad just called too. Uh, Unfortunately, um, his father-in-law passed away a little while back, and now um, his mother-in-law is moving into a, a nice retirement home, and uh, so they're cleaning out her house, going through some collectibles, and she's unable to take all of them with her, so tomorrow I will be picking up a truckload of uh, collectibles and art and mirrors and such so um, that will be on our day off so again we never get a day off but when you do what you love um, it makes it worth it so I don't mind going through and appraising and and uh, preparing those items and we'll have some new items to put into the store um, from that and that happens a lot that's not unusual we're used to that. People will call and it's not an estate, but it's, you know, downsizing sale. That's what we do. All right. So that was quick and easy. I just wanted to make sure I get these handles, extra paint on them. That'll be dry in no time. Let me turn it around here just to make sure. I want to get a little bit extra on these feet. When you're dealing with spindles on the legs, you, you got to go around them several times, especially Again, going from dark wood to light paint, especially neutrals and whites. And this is buttercream, which is a nice, nice light color. I love this color. It's one of my favorites that Dixie Belle makes. I even have a couple pieces of furniture in my house that I've painted that. You may have seen the china cabinet in some of our other videos and uh, the uh, vintage religious theme wood that we painted and that's buttercream we use it for our our tv stand and for storage even our printer is underneath that for 
printing out eBay labels and such for shipping. All right, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put another coat on this side too. I'm here, the brush is wet for me as well. Oh, I'll be glad when he gets home and we can watch some Netflix and chill out and talk about how we're gonna deal with this next, this next part of our business expanding or downsizing or I don't know there's so many changes going on where we're located we take it kind of month by month but lately it would be nice to just relax after 20 years and not have to worry about the hotel going in next to us or what's happening with Tallahassee real estate and of course everyone's worried about the coronavirus, everyone's saying, you know, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, people are dying, and all this is happening, so you gotta have your face mask, and people are selling out a face mask, and honestly, I know I should be reacting differently, probably, based on what everybody's doing, but I have tons of face masks for painting, so at least I have those, and um, they're just saying to wash your hands, which I do a lot anyways, because when you deal with the and retail you take money in and you around a lot of people all day so washing our hands and using germ kill all day is, is vital I mean there's no way to get around it so we kind of already do that Lysol and, and other stuff so all right I am pretty content with how this is looking I still haven't decided about the distressing that I'm going to be doing and or maybe a transfer I'm just uh, using some of the paint on my brush that I was about to get rid of you know the sink and just wipe it off of here and miss that part of another coat may as well wipe on the brush I love this little table it's got a lot of character a lot of space to put your stuff in so it's a character with functional art is what I like to call. A lot of our furniture is functional art. My favorite kind to work with. Antique pieces. He is still not <laughs> done with the door yet. So I'm going to stop filming and get on my phone and start calling. I'm going to have to call an after hours uh, construction crew to come help us fix this roll up door. Thanks for watching. So on our 20th anniversary, here I am at the store at 7-Eleven in the evening on a Sunday night. We've been closed for two hours and the door that the landlord is supposed to repair is still broken. So here I am waiting for repair people None. and hoping they I don't have to spend the night here. The this is what we're dealing with. A door that won't close all the way, which means it's not secure all night. So we may be spending the night here on our 20th anniversary. And uh, yeah, I'm not a happy camper at all. I'm gonna go uh, put a bruise in and box somebody's ears off. These two guys are my heroes as usual for the last 15 plus year. I'm calling the big boys. Happy Monday morning, it is March 2nd and we have a lot of shipments going out. So this goes to Jody. Jody is from Norwalk, Ohio, and ordered a stuff transfers <laughs> so early from Etsy. So thank you, thank you, Jody. And then we've got Johnny, who ordered from Spartanburg, South Carolina, a vintage collectible head base, basically. Um, and then we've got Heather from Ripley, Tennessee. Heather ordered a bunch of Dixie Bell paint off of eBay. And here's your package. We're shipping out it's heavy she chose some amazing colors and she has a booth space up in i guess ripley tennessee and hopefully heather if you're watching comment below what your store is and where it's located and the name of it and then we've got george who ordered from downey california a vintage master recording so a great lp i'm not going to say what the lp is yet because honestly i cannot remember the name of the LP right now because again it's early so there you go shipping them out now I'm gonna drive them over to the post office 
good morning. Thank you for shopping with us locally, globally. Wow, you guys, this Monday's been kicking butt for online sales. Another order today of a transfer goes to Linda in Roanoke, Virginia. The mail person still hasn't made it, even though we've already left the house and made a trip, and now we're back. The mailman will be here. We have a great mailman. So your package will actually go out the same day you purchased it within 20 minutes of the time you purchased it. So we try our best to get things out to you as quickly as possible. Thanks again, Linda. Happy afternoon. It is Tuesday, March 3rd. I just got back from a meeting and I want to do a shout out to Maureen from Tucson, Arizona. This package is on its way. It's a transfer and you're going to love it. And once you do one transfer, you get addicted and you want to put transfers on all your furniture, all your collectibles, canvas, purses, jeans, jackets. You'll find a multitude of ways to use these transfers and you'll be addicted like I am. Enjoy, Maureen. Hey, everybody. So I am still finishing up this cabinet. Um, <laughs> Petey, the rescued cat, decided he wanted to... Get in there. I don't know if you can see him. There's Petey. Where's Petey? Okay, there's Petey. But anyways, so I've let this dry for a couple days as other things came up. And in the meantime, it can be done as it is. I wanted to leave it. I was going to just stress it or add a transfer. And I decided old school style. I just like sometimes me personally, neutral furniture without the transfers and the extra distressing because I think of it as like beachy, cottagey, like old school antiques that just, you know, people painted white it's real wood all the way through and so then i was looking at this excuse the drawer i haven't cleaned it out yet but instead of adding like a transfer or something on the front because it's got these amazing old handles that are the original i was thinking again i like a pop of color when you're opening up a drawer this is what you see you know you only pull it out you obviously this drawer would go all the way back so you see to about here from here to here and so i always like that extra little like wow you know, you're going in there to grab a few things and you just, you just see that pop of color or pop of something, a surprise really. So what I've decided to do is I am going to not transfer it or paint it one color. I'm going to stencil it because two of the drawers are one width and the other drawer is about a three fourths. The same transfer, sorry, stencil won't work. So I think I'm going to go with this stencil here on the bigger drawers if that gives you an idea. And then on the smaller drawer, I believe I'm gonna go with this one on that. So that is what I'm working on. I'm going to be pouncing with my pouncer. Um, I thought about using the bigger one because it would make it go quicker, but I think I'm just gonna use this one. And instead of being a pop of color, I really decided to go with neutral. So I'm just gonna use my Dixie Bell Paint Buttercream um, that I did the actual project on and I've just got a paper towel you could put a plate down a little bit of wetness on it and I'm going to because you when you're stenciling you want the least amount of paint you want to offload so you only need a little bit I'm actually going to use the paint from the cap so I'm going to dip in there and then I'm going to offload onto my paper towel that's a little damp so that take off some of the excess yes I hear you that's Petey crying. And I am going to start stenciling. So I'm going to press this down. And this isn't the greatest because I'm on my rolly chair. But this is the upright. This is the drawer. I'm going to try to put it about center. Realizing that you could take this down, but I'm just going to hold it. Because by the time I'm done, this last bit here, they won't be able to see because this will never come out far enough in the drawer. When they open up the drawer, only this far, only about to this far, you'll see anyways. So here we go. I'm gonna lay this flat and just start pouncing. You wanna go straight up and down. So typical using your phone to do this. Um, I don't know what point the video stopped recording, but I've already put the stencil on. It did go a little cattywampus because I was moving it. so. Do use uh, a painter's tape to hold it down if you have it. And I am going to let this dry. I was gonna do the stencil further, but the drawer's only gonna open so far. I could fill it in top and center. I don't want to. I like things a little askew. I know my mom's gonna hate this because it's off center. It's off center. So while that's doing that, I'm going to flip it over and 
I should let it dry and not put it on here, but I think I can hold it and do the same thing at the same time. Petey, hold on. That is my cat crying. Actually, you know what? I'll be smart. I'll just put this drawer in, let it dry, and I'll start working on the bigger drawer, which is a different stencil. Sorry for this angle, but I decided to go with, which one did I decide to go with? Hmm. I think I'm going to go with this one. And again, I'm going to put some paint on there and offload. Paint from the lid and then just go for it. I know, Petey. I'm painting. I'll let you out in a minute. I think he sees the neighbor's cat, Lou, and he wants to go out there. It's like having kids that have their friends. Hey, Mom, my friend's outside. Can I go play while you videotape? Can you hear him crying? He's at the glass front door. Hold on, Petey. So I was saying earlier, I don't know if it made it on the video, that these stencils can be expensive or what you think is expensive. $30 and up, some of them. But when you see how many times you can use them over and over again, it ends up being pennies. Per, per project and spend the money on a good stencil because they do make a difference. You can go to Wally World and get less expensive ones, which I have done, and use them as often. You just take care of them and they'll last as well. So there you have. Okay, so there's one design. I think I'm going to put the next design right next to it so they line up. I will be smushing the one next to it. I know, PD, hold on. And I'm going to put my finger there, that there. I'm going to offload some of this paint. Again, I'm using the paint straight from the top of the cap of the paint jar. So it's not even there. And I'll hold it down. I'm not even dipping into the jar doing this as far as how much paint you're going to use. Not much. Sorry, buddy. All right. So if you have a tape down, things like this won't happen where you move. I move. I'm off center a little. So please use painter's tape. <laughs> Don't do what I do. I'm one of those people who doesn't, doesn't like perfection perfection. I like it to be a little off-centered and kind of like, I don't know. So I know that drives a lot of you crazy. I just like it kind of organic. The Oopsie Daisies makes it fun to me. When I see something that's antique and they've got a little Oopsie Daisy, I kind of love it. It tells me that there's a person, a real person making it. Okay, there you see the pattern. So I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of the drawer. And I'm also going to put it on the second drawer. So I'm just going to push this in. I'll let it dry. I'm going to, of course, let the cat out so he can go play with his friends. Now, I don't know if you can see. There. Excuse all the other thing in the background. But now you can see, and it's not completed, but see that? So when this person pulls this drawer out, they get a little pop of, hey, what is that? What's going on there? It's a little fancier than uh, just leaving it plain. So I'm going to push those in. I'm not letting them hit the side so they can dry inside the cabinet. And then I will work on the next one. So you can do this. Just use a stencil. Use a stencil. Choose a stencil if you're going to spend the money that um, you like, that you'll possibly use over and over and over again. Pennies on each project. It's fun. It's easy. And it makes a great big impression. And it makes it look more finished. And it shows that you really cared enough to even impress um how much important this antique is by doing jazz up the, you know, jazz up the parts you don't see every day that you only see for a few minutes. I think it's lovely. It's a nice little addition and you guys will like that too. A little bit of paint, a stencil, make it unique, make it fun. Yay! All right, I just put the last coat on and that is a clear coat. I used flat sheen because I still want it to be a matte look. It's shiny right now because it's wet. But once it dries, it'll be a matte or what's called a flat sheen. 
And there you go, those drawers. Yes, I gotta clean out the um, inside of the drawers, but you can see the sides of the drawers. A little pop of whimsy there. So I'm gonna let it dry a couple days and then it'll make it into the store. A great little antique piece. This was fun. I like doing smaller pieces because they're simple. I didn't close all the drawers yet because I'm letting that dry. So yes, they do close. All right.